Netflix, HBO, and Hulu. These are just a few of the better known players in the ever expanding business of TV and movie streaming. Even companies like Disney and Apple are getting in on the act. So what does this changing media landscape mean for investors? Here to connect the dots is Andrew Yastrib, telecom and media analyst with TD Asset Management. Andrew, thanks for being with us today. Glad to be here. Andrew, can you take us through the current trends and how video consumption is changing? I think the gr good part uh, to start here would be to talk about consumption uh, in, in the US. Uh, and if you look at the consumption over uh, last five years, uh, video consumption in total hasn't changed over the last five years. It's about five hours per day for adults. Um, but what is interesting is that uh, the consumption uh, is changing uh, for different uh, sources of video. Uh, so if you look at traditional TV, over the last five years it declined by 10%, uh, and it declined by 5% in the last year alone. And on the flip side of that, uh, obviously, as everybody knows these days, uh, streaming is gaining market share, and uh, streaming consumption was up 37% last year. And the way you watch TV, does it differ whether you're a baby boomer or a millennial or a Gen Xer like myself? Uh, absolutely, there are big differences. So if you look at different demographics, we can start with uh, uh, older demographics, 65 plus. Uh, they absolutely love their TV. They watch on average uh, almost seven hours a day and that number hasn't changed at all over the last five years. On the other end of the spectrum are children, and children two to 11 year old uh, watch now on average two hours uh, of TV per day, uh, compared to three hours uh, a, five years ago. In last year alone, that number declined by 16%. Uh, but as any parent knows these days, um, Screen time is not a smaller problem for, for kids. It's a, a much bigger issue. It's just that kids don't watch regular TV. They watch uh, streaming products on tablets and smartphones. And uh, as you look at uh, adults, if you take category th 35 to 49, uh, so it's not the tech-savvy millennials, uh, for them, uh, TV viewership declined by 7% last year. And so given these trends, is streaming TV, is, is, is it the future of television? I think the short answer is yes. And uh, Disney recently had an investor day and during that uh, presentation, uh, management of Disney uh, stated that uh, streaming is TV, it is better TV. And I completely agree with that. And why is it better than traditional TV? Uh, I think there are three uh, reasons. One is uh, options, number of options that are available for you. If you turn on uh, Netflix or Prime Video, uh, you have literally thousands of uh, titles to choose from. Uh, with cable TV, you have a couple of hundred uh, uh, options, and with broadcast, you just have a handful. Uh, I think second reason uh, is that um, streaming provides you on-demand viewing, which means that all you need is a device with a screen and internet connection, and then you can watch anything you want, anywhere you want, as much as you want. And final reason, I think, is that um, streaming provides personalization, which means that Netflix knows uh, what you watched before, what you like to watch, what you don't like, and uh, they make it a little easier for you to find something new to watch. As you know, uh, with traditional TV, sometimes it can be a painful and frustrating process to find uh, something to watch while flipping through the channels. Now, I'm glad you mentioned Netflix uh, because many of us know Netflix and HBO as your next graph will show. Can you kind of walk us through this and, and talk to us about how the industry has changed over the last three years? I think that's a, uh, it's a very dynamic uh, industry that went through a lot of changes recently. If you look at this chart, uh, it shows uh, the uh, quantity and quality of, uh, of uh, content uh, by company um, back in 2015. Um, it shows that um, back then uh, this was a very fragmented industry and Netflix was very small and if you look at uh, where it was positioned uh, it was not far from Viacom in terms of number of uh, movies and TV shows that uh, they were producing. Um, those are the two axes and the uh, size of the bubble shows quality uh, of uh, TV shows measured by a uh, number of Emmys won. Um, this char chart also shows that uh, Disney back then was also relatively small, uh, roughly in the same uh, spot, uh, because they were focused on producing a small number of blockbuster films. The more content uh, focus as, as Ex Exactly. And, uh, focused on really blockbuster movies with uh, huge uh, revenues at, at the box office. Uh, if you fast forward to 2018, just in three years, uh, you can see that Netflix um, moved significantly. Now it's as big as any of the major studios in terms of both quantity and quality of production. Uh, Disney got a lot bigger also because they acquired Fox assets. And uh, as you can see, the structure also changed because AT&T acquired Time Warner. It's one of the big four studios. So, so there's a lot more uh, consolidation in the industry. Uh, Absolutely, yes, and, and Comcast is another conglomerate that owns NBC Universal. Uh, so I as you look at this industry now, you li literally have very f four very large players that dominate the space. 
So given all of this, what are three things that investors should take away from this? Well, I think first thing is that streaming is still in very early days. Uh, uh, it's still very small relative to pay TV um, viewership. And I think that uh, there's still room for, uh, for growth and for a small number of potentially very big uh, winners down the road. Uh, second takeaway is that a lot of uh, traditional media companies that are smaller, that lack scale, and they don't have as many uh, streaming uh, subscribers. And by the way, all those companies that uh, were presented on the chart, all of them have a streaming uh, strategy. They either have a streaming product now or they will launch one soon. So some of those that are smaller, um, they are exposed because most of their revenues are coming from traditional TV ecosystem, from subscriber fees and advertising. And thirdly, I think this disruption in the industry it will actually accelerate. As you mentioned, mentioned previously, uh, over the next 12 months, uh, we'll see four new streaming products coming online. We'll see uh, Disney+, Plus. we'll have Apple TV+, Plus. we'll have uh, Comcast and uh, AT&T launch new streaming services. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, people watch five hours of TV per day or video per day. Uh, I don't think they will cut more on sleep or cut on, on their work to watch more. So there will be more competition for, for this uh, entertainment, video entertainment time of consumers. And I think that means that th that 5% decline in viewership uh, last year that I mentioned in the beginning, I think that will get worse over time and uh, TV viewership will, uh, the decline there will accelerate. Andrew, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.